going live. What's up, everybody? Trip Smith here, and this is episode 19 of the Reply Line. Thank you all for joining along on these good times. I really do enjoy these live, this live stuff with you folks. Uh, it's just a lot of fun for me, and I can kind of cut up and have a good time. So let's get after it. So uh, in this episode, I'm going to have a little funny comment for you guys, kind of on the long, along the lines of the funny comment in episode 18. Then I'm going to go into stuff. I uh, have a few questions from a patron, actually. One is about uh, underquilts and like underquilt temperatures, and then something a little bit about uh, comfort with pillows and like what type of pillow I would suggest for uh, what type of sleeping scenario. And then we're going to go into the live audience here and we are going to uh, answer some live questions. So I appreciate everyone who is able to make it here live. Uh, it really is a good time for me and I hope it's a good time for you folks. So uh, what's up? We've got Chris and uh, Culture Lifestyle and Travel in the chat right now. I know there's a few other folks here, but all right, let's get on with it. See what we have. All right, so the first comment is from someone, actually the same person who made the, I'll call it a entertaining comment about my accent, uh, and his name is George Canvin Jr. And he leaves another one. Basically, he is going through and he is, I guess, watching the video very closely and paying attention to each time that I don't enunciate my words. And sometimes when my old Southern slang kind of gets in uh, to the way I talk, and. Uh, <laughs> he kind of he kind of brings those up, but the first one that he brings up isn't that. It's where I actually did call something uh, incorrectly. All right, that is the uh, intercoastal waterway, which is what I talked about, which is the ICW, which is you know the the shipping highway that kind of goes around the coastal United States. It's actually not the intercoastal waterway. I don't know. I guess that's just what I've kind of heard, or I think I've heard all my life living down in the South. But it's actually the intra coastal waterway. So hopefully the next time that I'm on the intracoastal waterway, I won't say intercoastal and I'll say intracoastal because I do plan on getting back on that sucker uh, soon when I get another skiff because actually I sold my skiff. Uh, so <laughs> I'm in the market for another. But uh, anyhow, I want to get back on the intracoastal waterway and get some more adventures under the belt. All right, so the next one he says, all right, uh, in, all right, basically he's saying, he said intracoastal, not intracoastal. So he's saying the correct enunciation and then the uh, my slang afterwards. So he says, it's important, not important. <laughs> and then he says, it's rural king, not rural king. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I don't get this one. It's times, not toms. I, 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 don't, I don't understand that. I don't remember that one. Then he says, it's island, not island. Because I guess I do say right here at the island, you know, so I don't really say island. <laughs> then uh, lawnmower, not lawn mower. <laughs> So it's uh, it's kind of interesting how he said all that stuff. So you know, I I do enjoy all the comments that I get on my videos. Pretty much, I mean, every you know, maybe like one out of a hundred, maybe like a negative one that, or no, actually, probably a little more than that actually. But none of them really get to me. I just kind of laugh it off because these people have nothing better to do than to leave a negative comment. So all right, what's up? We got Keith Johnson, Mezzer Fabrication, Human Being. Uh, oh, he's got to get back to work. Clay Ganey, James Riley, Sports Fisherman or short fisherman Chris, Tim Allgood, and Sylvia. Yes, exactly. Who cares, Sylvia? I don't care. Apparently, he cares, though. All right, so now let's go into our actual questions that I think you folks will find valuable more than just hopefully entertaining. Thanks, Sylvia. Uh, yeah, I guess I do have a, I don't know, I guess it's a great accent. It doesn't sound like an accent to me. It just sounds like me. All right, so this is from Jim Allen over on Patreon. Jim, and actually both of these questions, believe it or not, are from Jim. So, But he has some good questions that I thought you guys would find valuable. So first question is, hey Tripp, what's up man? Hey, how do you like sleeping with that neck pillow? So he's talking about, you know, my inflatable travel neck pillow that I use when I'm in my hammock. He says, Academy's pillow is nice and big, but dang, if it don't take up a lot of room in the pack. I have those blow up pillows you used to use, and I prefer it more under the knees. Uh, nice night swimming video by the way Jim well Jim all right yes I like both types of pillows it just depends on where I'm sleeping or what kind of sleeping arrangement I have if I'm in the hammock yes I do like the travel neck pillow because I'll take that sucker and I'll turn it upside down and I'll just lay on it and basically in the hammock I found that all I really need is something just to keep my keep my head from just 
kind of falling over to the side, right? Because I don't really need any lift or, you know, maybe a little bit under the neck support. So if I turn that neck pillow upside down, so it's like U-shaped right here, right, and lay on it and take a good bit of the air out of it, it just kind of just nests my head back and it just feels fantastic. And now if I'm sleeping on flat ground or on the boat or something on an air mattress, then I will take just a regular kind of rectangular-ish type inflatable pillow and I will lay on that that way so I get kind of a more traditional pillow that kind of lifts my head up a little bit and you know kind of I guess keeps my spine straight right uh, but then you know I do use the inflatable models and not the uh, the packable models or whatever they want to call them because I mean how, how how packable do you want your pillow right if you want a pillow you don't want to lay on it and it packed down to nothing right so it's really not packable you know because you know if you want it to have support it's not going to crush under any weight of your head so it's not going to pack well in your backpack but I would say the only negative really to an inflatable pillow in my eyes well I guess there's two is you know you could have a leak which uh, doesn't really happen to me I, I don't think I've ever had that happen no I haven't uh, but then wait actually did I have that no I don't think I've ever had that happen but one thing you know it is airproof so it's waterproof so when you lay on it uh, if you get hot you can find some condensation some moisture between yourself and the pillow so that's kind of the only negative part uh, so other than that I really like the inflatable because they do they get really compact which is something I'm a big fan of is gear that's compact so it's not taking up a lot of room in my dry bag my backpack or my skiff you know whatever I'm hauling stuff in so that's that all right, next question is also from Jim Allen. This is a couple months ago. I was kind of digging to find this one here because uh, I remembered it. It's, he says, hey, Trip, hope everything's good with you and your family. Thank you, Jim. Uh, he says, question, we're headed to the Buffalo River Monday, and I'm wondering if I should take my underquilt. What temperatures are you normally comfortable sleeping without one? This is a pretty good question. A lot of people wonder this. And so basically the way that I determine on if I'm going to bring my underquilt on a trip or not is the temperatures, right? I'll get on the weather, I'll look at the forecast, and if at night, if it's gonna drop below 70 degrees, that's when I say, okay, I'm going to bring my underquilt. If it's not gonna drop under 70, I can generally be pretty comfortable uh, just in my sleeping bag liner uh, and, you know, and things like that. And you know, if I do get chilled, I can put on my rain jacket or something to kind of break that wind. Because really, I sleep comfortably in 70 degrees at home, right? If it's 70 degrees in my home. But the difference that the hammock makes is it brings in another element, I guess you could say. Because when your body is laying tight against that hammock material, you know, especially if you're, you know, if it's skin on the hammock and all you have between yourself and the elements is the, the, the hammock fabric, which is generally pretty thin. Any wind and stuff that whips under there can be pretty chilling, which is nice when it's, you know, 75 or 80 degrees at night, like it is sometimes in the Florida Panhandle uh, in the summer. But, you know, if it's a little bit cool, if it's, you know, 65 degrees and you don't have any insulation that's protecting you from that wind and it's whipping, oh my goodness, it can really be cold. It can feel like it could just feel like almost an ice pack. Not quite, but you know, it could be really cool to your back. So that's when I would want an underquilt. Now, could you get by with something else other than an underquilt? Yes, you probably could if you just had something to stop the wind, right? Because that's kind of the main uh, driving factor that's making you cold when it's not, you know, super cold anyway. You know, if it's 65 degrees, 60 degrees, you could probably get by if you wanted to, you know, had some sort of a um, of, a, of a windbreak or something, but generally I'll just take the underquilt because it packs up pretty small anyway. It's pretty light, so it's not too aggravating. And if it does get really cold, I know I'm going to be nice and comfortable. Uh, so other than that, um, you know, so basically if it's 70 degrees or below, I'm going to take it. If not, I'm going to leave it at home and just go with it because I know I can bundle up in a little something something that I bring with me like my rain jacket, I'll put my pants on, something like that just to keep me a little bit warmer. But I've never really had an issue. So that is that. All right, folks, now we're going to get into some of the live questions here from all our folks in the chat here. So uh, let's go through. So if you guys have a question, uh, start your question with a question mark. Start your chat with a question mark and then ask your question. It just kind of helps me as I'm going through the chat here. All right, let's see here. Yes, Tom, obviously, uh, Mr. What was his name? John? No, George. Yeah, he's not from the South. Uh, <laughs> you live on intra coastal oh cool and then oh wow all right it's so a human being he says he lives on the intracoastal waterway and he says intercoastal waterway isn't isn't that crazy 
All right. Uh, oh, great. Here's a question from Clay Ganey. What's up, Clay? He says, have you ever done anything on the St. Johns River? Uh, Lake George has Silver Glen Spring and Salt Run I think you would like. No, I haven't done anything there, Clay, but that is somewhere I really want to go. I was actually planning a trip there next week. Uh, but that kind of got nixed, just uh, kind of some mix-ups and stuff. So I changed my location for my uh, four-day trip next week. That's going to be a lot of fun for my birthday, which is on for Saturday. Uh, so, no, I haven't been to the St. John's River, but um, I do plan on going back there. Maybe once I get a uh, another skiff, that would be a great river to run on the, on the skiff. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the Molexa says, can you do a rock dock in Wisconsin? Love your energy and keep up the great work. Uh, you know, ever since like the first year I said I want to do multiple rock docks in different locations. But it's pretty difficult to, uh, to get the venue and get everything set up and, you know, to be allowed to do this type of event somewhere and also for it to be surrounded by some decent paddling. And you know I can do it here because I'm local because I'm hauling a bunch of junk there. I mean I'm, I mean there, there, there's a lot that goes into Rocket Dock, and so it would be tough for me to do it somewhere else. But I would like to do it one day, and hopefully, um, you know if the channel keeps growing like it is, I will have more time to do that. Uh, so thank you all for watching because uh, things are uh, things are growing with the channel, and I really appreciate that, and I, I love it. Uh, let's see here, Jax. Well, what's up, Jax? Drink water. Uh, he says, uh, "Oh, River Lifestyles." I'm glad uh, y'all are inspired by the adventures. Jax says, "Play us a tune, trip." Uh, what you want to hear, Jax? But uh, make a request, buddy. I don't. I don't know. Let's see here. Uh, Short Fisherman Christie says he wish he had a boat so you could do some more salmon fishing. That would be cool. Hey, uh, Kenneth, what's up, Ken? Yeah, I'm looking forward to Rock Talk too, brother. I'm ready. Uh, let's see. Yes, the inflatable neck pillows are fantastic. And River Lifestyles is building uh, their own hammock to go on a Tennessee riverboat trip. Nice. Uh, let's see here. What's up, Sue? All right. Uh, Courtney Duran says, what skiff am I looking at now? Well, Courtney, <clears throat> I'm looking at a lot of different skiffs. But if I, if I had um, or the most realistic one, the most realistic target that I'm looking for is the Saltmarsh Heron 16, preferably the 18, or either an Ancona Advent or the Ancona Cayenne. Uh, if I can find one of those uh, with a you know a four-stroke on it, a larger four-stroke, and you know those have built-in aluminum gas tanks, they have uh, they're they're better than chop than my IPB 14, and they. They have more amenities and stuff, you know, better dry storage for all my gear and stuff. A little bit larger for the family, but not too big to you know, be considered, uh, you know, a large skiff. So that's what I'm looking at, um, you know, and they're very, very, very hard to find. I've been looking, looking, looking for a while, and they just don't really come up for sale. But um, I'm, I'm ready to purchase, so whenever one comes up for sale, I'm going to snatch it up. I hope so, uh, and I hope I don't want to uh, settle for anything much different. But but I might, and it'll still be cool. All right. Uh, EB said he liked that fire in the last adventure. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed the fire. I know a lot of people say, Trip, we want a campfire. Well, there you got a little campfire. Uh, let's see here. Short Fisherman Chris says, do I have an Amazon page for your for my gear? Yes, I do. Actually, I just don't have a link for it, which is foolish of me. But I am very soon going to put together what I'm going to call a resource page, which is you know uh, on tripsmith.live, where I'm going to have just a lot of the stuff that I think will be helpful for you guys, like gear, you know, uh, you know good links and resources, and you know, like the uh, my packing list thing here, and there's something else. No, that's, that's music on there, but like my packing check sheet list and stuff where you guys can go get it easily and download that stuff for free. It's already there now, but uh, I want to just set it up better, and, I, and I'll have that link for you. Uh, let's see, but most of the time I do post the links to the gear that I use in that relevant video in the description. All right, let's see here. I'm always welcome to come up to Chattanooga, Tennessee and hit the river with us. Yeah, I would love to. I just... Uh, if, if I'm going to travel that far to Tennessee, what's that, like eight or six hours for me? Um, there's a lot of places within six hours for me farther south that I would prefer to hit first. Uh, nothing against going up to Tennessee and stuff, but I like the salt water, and I like the clear salt water in the springs, and there's a lot of that down there that I still have yet to hit. Uh, let's see here. Question from Dirt Bike Ricers. Have you ever been up to New England? Uh, no, I haven't. I mean, I went up there one time and like, seventh grade 
to Washington, D.C., but other than that, no, I have never been. <laughs> so I don't really know much about that area up there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Eastrup says, oh, he's sitting on the beach in Denmark on the SUP trip next to a few the few days. Oh, cool. <laughs> he's getting eaten alive. I guess that's by bugs. Well, good luck, Eastrup. All right, next question is from Geoff Taylor. He says, I have an important question. Is, is your wife going to let you buy a new boat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's going to let me buy a, a newer boat. Yes, she is. Um, yeah, she, she wants a more family style boat. You know, we'll be, we'll be on our little skiff, you know, uh, riding around at the beach or something. She'll be like, ooh, I like that boat. We'll be going on the road. She'll be like, ooh, I like that boat. And I'm like, sweetie, that boat is too big for what I want to do. And, you know, I can't get some big, huge boat to do my adventures on because that's not, you know, that's not minimalist, which is what I like. It's not simple, which is what I like. It's not cheap to operate, which is what I like. You know, it can't go up in all the nooks and crannies and in the springs, which is what I like. I'm like, so babe, you know, I've got to, I've got to stay small. I want to stay small. I love staying small. So she's like, fine. Well, tell you what, you get, or she's like, okay, get, get this little skiff. And then next, we're going to get a family boat. I'm like, fine, whatever. So one day we'll have a family boat, but geez, I just like the little stuff, right? Great question. <laughs> Important uh, thing to consider, too. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. As a point of words, this is from Keith Johnson. He says, intra, he says, is within a thing. Enter is between things. So, intral coastal, within the coast, intercoastal, between coast. <laughs> cool. We just learned. Now, now, that's some good information that I like learning. All right, I'm going to remember that. Intra is within, enter is between. All right, okay, cool, love that. Thanks, Keith, he lives in Canada. He has no horse. <laughs> so, so I guess if you're going from Canada to the United States, you're on the intra-coastal waterway, but if you're going like from uh, Georgia to Florida, you're on the intra-coastal waterway. Okay, I guess that's maybe how it works. Uh, what model rain jacket am I using? Asked Tom Griffin. The, right now, the rain jacket I've been using for the last several years is the Frog Togs Extreme Light Jacket. Yeah, I really like it. It packs down extremely small. It's extremely light. Uh, it, it works pretty well, although I am having a little bit of corrosion issue on my zipper, but I've had it for probably like four years and, you know, kind of beat it up. So, uh, it still works. You just got to really, really work that zipper to get it started. But other than that, it's a pretty nice jacket. I mean, it's only like 35 or 40 bucks, so it's kind of, you know, it's not like an expensive uh, Columbia or Mountain Hardware <clears throat> rain jacket, which can be like 150 bucks. So I feel like it can be almost semi-disposable. You know, use it for four years and get a new one, kind of, kind of deal. But I'm still using mine. Uh, let's see. You're welcome, short fisherman. All right, James O'Reilly says, "Woo! Did you hear that thunder?" He says, "Trip." Come to Ireland and sup on Guinness Lake. Amazing spot. Yeah, I imagine it is amazing, but that's that's an amazing expense for me to get to, to Ireland. That would cost a lot of money. All right, let's see here. Mad Sai, what's up? Says, hi, Trip. Are you still using the DJI camera? Oh, well, heck, yeah, I am. Where's my DJI? It's somewhere close. I don't really go far from it. Here it is. Yes, I'm still using the DJI camera. Uh, or have I gone back to a GoPro? No, I haven't even touched my GoPro other than to put it, I sometimes bring it with me if I'm like, okay, if I lose this, I've got to use a GoPro, but if not, no, I'm absolutely using this DJI because I love this DJI. It's cheaper than a GoPro and it has the front facing screen. Boom, just like that. You can see yourself. That is what it's all about. That is so valuable to me when I'm setting up a shot. I mean. Ugh. Um, I do have another camera to try out that has, uh, it's called the Insta360. It can be used in front-facing configuration mode, but uh, not in both. But yes, I love this. Love this. And yeah, it's going to be hard for GoPro, for me to go back to GoPro until GoPro comes out with something like this, which I'm pretty sure they're probably going to do in their next rendition because that's awesome. All right. Uh, next question is from Donnie Person. He says, hi, Trip. What do you use to purify the water? Any suggestion uh, on the type? Uh, he said he saw a clip where I used some kind of dry bag similar. Okay, yes. 
Um, what I use to purify my water, I use you know any kind of a little inline filter like a little Sawyer Squeeze or what's the other one called? Or Sawyer Mini. There's another one that I have. I can't remember the, the name of the brand because it's really not super important. You know, they're like 15 bucks or something on Amazon. And then I will take something I really do like is the CNOC bags, C-N-O-C. They're water bags you can fill up very easily and then attach to your water filter and then you roll it down and squeeze that water out. I absolutely love that, that system. It's simple, it works really well. Um, and you can filter a lot of water pretty quickly. So C knock bags, you can check those out. If you're watching a video uh, with that, uh, where I'm using it, I probably have a link to it below. But you can go on Amazon, type in C N O C, and it'll pop up, or C N O C bag, and it'll it'll pop up. All right, uh, have I been to Oregon? No, I have never been to Oregon. Uh, it'd be isn't it like really cold and foggy up there? I don't know. No, I haven't been to Oregon. And before I travel, you know, all these far places way up like you guys are talking about, I'm going to be traveling down south first, right? Uh, let's see here. Can you put, all right, from D Danth98, he says, can you put out info for put in and take out locations for some of the rad trips like Twin Bridges? Twin Bridges? Twin, you mean like which one, Twin Bridges? Uh, so we can do some trip planning ahead of time. You know, I think most of the time I do say where I launch. Do I not say that? And sometimes I put it in there. I, don't, I guess maybe I don't sometimes. But I know that sometimes people watch my videos and then they ask a question. I'm like, I answered the question like three times in the video. But, you know, no worries because I know people are you know, just so sucked into the content. Sometimes you just miss those little things. But, um, but you know, I always try to say on river trips, hey, I'm putting in at such and such a spot and I'm taking out at such and such a spot. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe I miss that stuff. Um, so yeah, could I put the info places? Yeah, I, I will try to start putting it in the video description. That would be very handy. Why not, right? Thank you for the suggestion, uh, Dan. All right, Keith Johnson said uh, he'd consider the Northwest Passage or the Panama Canal as intercoastal. Okay, well, wouldn't that be like inter interoceanic or something? Interoceanal or something? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but because oh yeah oh because those are intercoastal because they do go through the coast. I don't know why he's okay. Yeah, I guess that could be either way. Yes, great thunder, Keith. Uh, hey, Christine, I'm great. Um, she has a question. Do I want to sell my GoPro? No, I don't want to sell the GoPro because I need a backup camera, right? Uh, so no, unfortunately, no. And plus, I wouldn't suggest the GoPro to you. So I wouldn't want to sell it to anyone that I know because. You know, really, I'm probably going to sell it for, I don't know how much they're worth, probably about what this is worth, and you're going to be much happier with a DJI Osmo action, Christina. I'm telling you the truth, it's worth the splurge. What's it, like 250 bucks? It's worth it. Oh, uh, let's see here. Dance says, for Rockadoc trips. Oh, for Rockadoc trips. Can you put out info? Oh, I see, I see. Um, Can I put out, uh, eh. I probably could. I, I don't. Uh, I may have to think about that. I mean, I, there's no reason I wouldn't do it. It just could get really confusing for people, and I wouldn't want to confuse folks. Um, uh, but basically, I mean, what you can know, Dan, is that all these trips are easy day trips. And once you get to Rockadoc and we have the paddle planning meetings in the morning, you can come in the morning and talk to me. I'm going to be there answering questions, and, and you say, "Hey, trip." We want to go paddling, you know, uh, uh, where do we need to go, right? And I'm going to say, well, what do you want to see? And then, according to that, I'm going to say, okay, this is where you need to go. This is how long it's going to take. And I'm going to have these handy little maps. You know, you may have seen those these already. But, you know, I've got maps on the back. They're good and waterproof that you guys can have. Uh, but, uh, no, I, I don't really have that stuff posted anywhere. And I, I guess kind of to eliminate confusion and so I don't get a, a thousand questions before Rockadoc gets here about those because um, I do get a lot of questions about Rockadoc that I have to answer. So if I got some about, well, what if we put in here and put in here and we took out here, I'm like, save it for Rockadoc, right? <laughs> but anyway, so, so there you go, Dan. All right, uh, Sean says, for those of us just starting out on an adventure lifestyle, do you have any recommendations on how to scout our local landscape for locations? Yes, I do, Sean. Uh, I, I would start if you're like all right your adventure lifestyle depending on what type of adventure you're doing if it is a paddling adventure or a hiking adventure I would look for a Facebook group 
that is either a you know let's say you're you live in north georgia i would type north georgia kayakers or north georgia kayaking or north georgia paddling and check out those facebook groups join those groups read in those groups ask questions in those groups because that's where you're going to have people who have the knowledge that you need in order to do these adventures and you can do the same thing with uh with backpacking now when it comes to uh, you know, just finding somewhere just at, at random. Yeah, my suggestion is to get on Google Maps, turn it on the, the 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 road mode or the traffic mode where you don't where it's not satellite view, and look for bodies of water if you're going paddling. And then you know, once you find the body of water, you know, click in the satellite mode, look at it, see if that's something that you think you might be interested in, find the name of it, and then Google it. Kayaking uh, Lake such and such, or kayaking the blank blank river, right? And then things will come up, and you could check it out that way. Uh, so yes, those are my suggestions. And then you know, if you want to track the mileages and stuff, that's when you go and you get on Google Earth Pro, and you can measure out uh, the distance between the bridges and stuff. All right. Uh, okay, one more because of East Coast to West Coast. Okay, maybe maybe so. <laughs> All right. Oh, Christina, thanks for the super chat. And uh, yeah, seriously, good camera. All right. I uh, hope, hope you can make a rock talk too. All right, uh, travel sell salvation. What's up, uh, you two? We're coming on your big camper to Rock a Dock. Uh, they says, "Hey Trip, I uh, love your videos, and we can't wait for Rock a Dock." Yes, I saw where you you two signed up, and I can't wait either. I'm really looking forward to it. What was their name? Was it Ron or Ed or something? Forgot your names. Uh, but watch this. Here we go. This a little uh, bum, but a bum. Ben Mask. What's up, Ben? Look at there. Am I good or what? All right, <laughs> let's see here. I uh, hope I didn't just uh, ruin your, your your alias or whatnot, <laughs> your privacy. All right, Fishing with Christina says, it's funny because she has a GoPro Hero 2018 and it's a piece of crap. Well, you don't want mine then. Oh wait, the Hero 18. Yeah, that's the $100 one or $200 one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I don't ever hook these things to my phone really and truly because I, I don't need to and it's just an extra hassle and it drains my phone battery and my camera battery when I'm out there and it doesn't do me any good to hook my phone to them really. All right, let's see here. John Hastings says the Mobile Delta may be a good place to check out. Yes, I do want to check out the Mobile Delta and I was actually I was going to speak at a the Mobile Canoe and Kayak Club meeting, the first meeting of the year uh, or of the season but right before COVID hit and then COVID hit and our little thing got canceled and I was so looking forward to going and speaking to that club <clears throat> and going and paddling over there too but that got nicked so hopefully we can reschedule that uh Daniel Miller yo trip uh you want to announce the thing I'm planning for Rocket Dog sure you guys Daniel Miller is heading up the uh <laughs> the, the craft beer night at Rocket Dog and it's going to be correct me if I'm wrong Friday night at 8 o'clock or 7.30, something like that. Anyways, yeah, there's going to be craft beer night again. Basically, the way that's going to work is everyone's just going to bring uh, like a, a, a six-pack of craft beer from a local brewery from wherever you're from, and then you know just everybody's going to gather together for the craft beer night, and then there's going to be just a, uh, a variety of beer samples that you can try if you're into that. I'm not really into craft beer, so, uh, you know, I'll just kind of walk by and be like, hope you guys are having a good time. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, that's headed up by Mr. Daniel Miller, the guy who got engaged last year at Rocket Dog during the raffle. Uh, what's up, Dana? Uh, go paddling apps. All right. Uh, James O'Reilly says, uh, we're sorry you won't be making it to Ireland. Uh, <laughs> yes, I hope y'all make it to Rocket Dog too. Here's his question. Apart from the obvious, camera boat sup skiff what's the one piece of equipment you cannot do without that's easy i mean yeah other than the obvious you know, food and water but it's either going to be you know some way to make some music right that that's i mean i guess i could do without it but that's really a luxury that i'd really enjoy so a bluetooth speaker <clears throat> or a guitar or something to make some music because i really do really love music it uh you know it changes just, I don't know, it just changes the way I feel. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Close, Ben and Rebecca. You missed the live. Chuck, you didn't quite miss it. I'm still here, I'm still here, man. <laughs> uh, you're a PI. Yeah, private investigator. That's right. 
<laughs> uh, Short Fisherman Chris says, what is Rockadoc? I'm new to the channel. Well, Rockadoc Chris is a five-day paddling and camping event that I put on where I invite all my subscribers to come and join in in Geneva, Alabama for uh, five days of paddling and camping in one of the greatest areas to do that. Um, and that's coming up the end of next month. Uh, you can check it out. You go to tripsmith.live slash rockadoc and check out and you know, welcome. You're welcome to come and join in, or you can just search Google or search YouTube for Rockadoc, and you'll see the videos I've made of the last two years at Rockadoc. It's, it's really awesome. It'd be a lot of fun. All right, let's see here. Amber said, Amber Aiken says, "Hey from Washington State, what's up? Excited to see you seen at Rockadoc. Yes, I'm excited to see your whole crew minus one, unfortunately, but I hope he's doing good in fire school. All right." Uh, let's see here. Christina has another question. She says, I have a question about your camera. When you go scuba diving, do you put a housing on it? Um, let's see. No, you do not need a housing on this camera when you get in the water. That's one reason that I use this camera or this type of camera. You know, the older GoPros, you had to put them in the, you know, the, the housing in order to make them waterproof. And why that while that did make them waterproof, one thing it did that was horrible is it killed the audio. So like if I'm, you know, if I have the camera set up somewhere, like on my kayak or a paddleboard, uh, in order to get good audio, like I talk to the camera all the time, I would need the housing to be off. Well, what if I flip over? What if it's raining? What if I wanted to grab it and jump in the water and do a trip dip real quick, right? And I had to put the housing on it. Well, that is so annoying. And I actually, I don't think I, yeah, I did on one of those crappy GoPros, but that's because there was nothing else out there. Um, but no, these are waterproof to what, 35 feet, I believe? Or is it something like that? Uh, pretty deep, Not, I've, I've been deeper than that with this. So, uh, you know, it's pretty waterproof, pretty nice little camera. So no, uh, you don't want one that's going to housing if you're going to be uh, filming audio. All right, uh, and she says, I know you work with wood. Have I ever tried making my own guitar? No, I haven't tried that. I don't know, I've, I've kind of thought about it, but you know, it's kind of like making your own skiff or making your own kayak or making your own paddleboard. You know, it's it's probably a fun experience and rewarding experience, but you know, instead of making a guitar, I'd rather spend all those hours I was making the guitar, rather spend that time playing guitar. Or rather than spending three weeks or three months building a boat, I'd rather spend three weeks or three months using a boat <laughs> that's already built that I bought, right? <laughs> so that's just kind of the way that I feel at this stage of my life. Now granted when I get older and you know retired and kind of my life slows down a little bit, that will probably change and I'll probably, you know, you know, want that rewarding experience of building a boat. But I have built a boat before, but you know, I learned that um uh, that I need to that I'd rather just be out on the boat than building it. <laughs> oh Hey Trip, where do you get your MREs? Good question. Um, some people actually, people send them to me or give them to me. And I'm actually going to uh, be getting some more next week. Um, quite a few actually. So yeah, pe people give them to me. I'm, I'm very fortunate in a lot of ways. Um, that is one of the ways people give them to me. But I don't eat them as much because I kind of ran out. But um, <laughs> anyways, there we go. Uh, let's see here. Short Fisherman Chris says, school will be started. Plus, I wouldn't have the money to go because I'm in high school still. I understand, Chris. No worries. One day, brother. One day. Uh, let's see. Doug Ulrich says, Paleo diet? Question mark. What is the diet you follow? He's in Texas and keep up the great videos. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Doug. Uh, so, paleo. No, I'm not really paleo. I'm kind of pretty much keto. Uh, sort of. Kind of like a dirty keto. And I'm a dirty carnivore, as in probably 90% or 85% of everything I eat is animal products like eggs or meat. Uh, and then I'm also, I fast every day. Like uh, the last, I don't know, several weeks I've been fasting for 20 hours a day, uh, probably at least six days a week. Um, I need to eat actually really, really soon so I can start eating tomorrow. Like if I stop eating right now at 319, I can eat tomorrow at 1119. So, uh, <laughs> so basically I try to eat these days between 11 and 3, I believe it is, that's when I try to eat. 
and then I fast the rest of the time, which means consuming zero calories, which puts you in ketosis, which you know, one of the big things it does is it burns fat, but also does a lot of other things like uh, like autophagy, where your body recycles old cells and makes new ones, and good things for your hormones, good things for your mood, and your brain clarity, and all kind of other stuff, and your energy. People think, oh my gosh, if I'm going to fast, I'm not going to have any energy. <laughs> Baloney. Um, I work out near the end of my 20-hour fast, and I do some pretty hardcore workouts, and I have plenty of energy. Um so there you go. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's what I like. That's my diet. Stimulate the economy too. Let's see. All right, River Lifestyle says, asks, do you plan your adventures around the weather or just say let's go? I just go because you know my work schedule at the fire department, <clears throat> you know, I, I have to pick my, my uh, vacation days and stuff uh, pretty far in advance sometimes, uh, sometimes a year in advance. So I have these blocks of time like, okay, like right now I have the end of next week off. So whatever happens the end of next week, I'm just gonna go, right? If it's a storm, you know, if it's not, you know, just totally horrible, I'm gonna go. And it's, you know, if it is a storm, it's gonna make great video. If it's not a storm, it's still gonna make great video. So I just go. <laughs> but uh, you know, that's all kind of, you know, it's part of the fun for me, right? You know, some a lot of times I don't even check the weather until right before I go. <laughs> it's, all, it's all part of the fun. Uh, Christina says, I love your videos. Thanks so much for sharing and being so humble. You are very welcome, Christina. Thanks for watching. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 3T1Gay says, are you ever going to change the motor on your skiff? Uh, no, I'm not going to change the motor on my skiff because I sold the motor and the skiff. So I'm going to change skiffs and motors because I really would like a four-stroke motor, which would be better for filming because it's quieter, right? Um, and I want something bigger. A, a bigger motor and faster. Like, you know, I had a 14 and a half foot boat with a 25 horsepower motor. I would like a 16 foot boat. So, you know, this much longer boat, but with a 60 horsepower motor. That, that's my target, right? We'd be skint back then. We'd be, we'd be gone, y'all. It'd be, it'd be fun. <laughs> all right, let's see here. Um, all right, last question. We're going to take right here from Traveling Salvation. It says, what's the crudest camping accessory I've used? What does crudest mean? Like, is that like the most awkward? Crudest. Crudest means uh, rudimentary or makeshift way. Camping accessory. Like, a, like uh, is that the junkiest camping accessory? Uh... Probably back in my back in the day when I first started, I had a bunch of Walmart stuff, right? I had Walmart dry bags. I had a Walmart um, water bladder that you would drink out of, right? I had uh, a Walmart map case. A wall, you know, just a bunch of junk. So Walmart stuff. Let's say that because now I don't think anything I use comes from Walmart other than my yellow plastic tent stakes. <laughs> other than that, nothing else comes from Walmart anymore because uh, uh, it's. Mm -mm. <laughs> after using it for so long or after using it and it failed sometimes not so long of use um i decided okay trip you need to get something decent <laughs> because this sucks all right folks thank y'all for joining in on the reply line i enjoy all you folks being here and hanging out with me uh so i hope y'all have a great day and i will see y'all in the next reply line uh actually yeah we'll probably will be going live uh here at home before the next adventure before we go live so uh Hope y'all look forward to that too. All right, folks, take care. God bless. Let me end this thing. It's always, it's always, it's always clunky when I end this thing. All right, folks, see ya.